Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the Monday Project Call. It is October 21st, and we have a great set of updates coming to you from across the breadth of the Mozilla Project. We're going to open with our weekly calendar. Uh, Wednesday, October 23rd, we have Miss Infocon in London, England, presented by Hacks, Hackers, and Mozilla. Featuring a consortium of powerful players in internet policy, technology, journalism, and media literacy, this gathering will help make important strides in exploring the implications of misinformation across the web and identifying methods to fighting it. Misinfocon, October 23rd on Wednesday. You can find more information linked in the wiki. MozFest in London, England, starting October 24th and going through the weekend. Join us for our 10th anniversary gathering of educators, activists, technologists, researchers, artists, and young people dedicated to creating a better, healthier internet. More information located in the wiki. And Friday, oops, let me go back a page. What did I, I got into a mobile mode here. Sorry about that. On Friday, we have Redecentralized Conference in London, England. Open sessions, lightning talks, and workshops. In unconference style, you can pitch your sessions on the day of, or feel free to get in touch ahead of time with uh, your ideas. Redecentralized Conference links to more information are available in the wiki. And next week, October 30th, we have the Homebrew Website Club happening across a number of cities, including San Francisco. Check the wiki for a link to next week's October 30th Homebrew Website Club meetups. Also, November 1st through 3rd, WordCamp US in St. Louis, Missouri. Again, you can check the wiki for a link to more information about WordCamp US. With that, we are going to move to our speakers for the day. And our first speaker up is Andrew Krug, Staff Security Engineer, coming to us with the IT Minute. It's time for the Weekly Minute Update, where we tell you all the things IT is doing to empower Mozillians in their mission to keep the web a global public resource open and accessible to all. Our first update today comes from the Core Systems team. Do you have slow C and Rust builds that make your life sad? Want to help your fellow devs go faster? Maybe you remember when we had the Ice CC in the offices, also referred to as Ice Cream. Well, the engineering workflow team and IT have worked together to provide an SC cache distributed setup in every office. All we need is volunteers to let us use their CPUs to create distributed builds. The intent is to replace the user-supported ICC with the IT-supported SC cache setup. Unlike ICC, we have SC cache schedulers in every office. If you're interested in helping out, check out login.mozilla.org. The SC Cache subsection has links on setting up the builder and getting registrant information. If you'd like to use SC Cache for your builds, take a look at the link here. Questions go to pound SC Cache on Slack. Our next update comes from the IT data and analytics team. Many Mozillians will be happy to know that our team continues to build an API integration platform allowing you to focus on the data you care about. We've completed the integration for Skyline, which gives a comprehensive view of Google Cloud, Salesforce, and lifecycle marketing. Finally, for audio and video collaborations, the team is gaining some insight into our web streaming platform, Air Mozilla. Here's some information on usage for 2019. Through the month of September, the team has supported 429 global Air Mozilla events that have been viewed 27,000 times, totaling 827,000 minutes of streaming video. That's an average of 40 events, 3,000 views, and 91,000 minutes per month through 2019. The team has implemented a few solutions along the way to improve the experience, such as upgrading hardware and software globally to stabilize the stream, along with providing recommendations on browser configuration best practices. The addition of Zoom and multiple platform releases have led to the steady decline of user-reported issues and overall improved experience. Next week, a short survey will go out to the company to help us reevaluate Air Mozilla for 2020. More exciting news over the next few weeks on upcoming improvements. And with that, yep, still me. Now I'm making an announcement on behalf of IT and Open Innovation. You may be aware that over the last few years, the Identity and Access Management team worked to launch a people directory for contributors and staff that really reflects our unique Mozilla culture. That directory became generally available this year. 
As a result, all staff Mozillians gave us great feedback on what we could be doing better. Today, we're proud to release a brand new version of people.mozilla.org. So what's new? First, let's talk about profile pictures. I know I like to maintain a consistent avatar across Mozilla web properties. We've launched a new picture API generally available today, so all Mozilla web properties can safely pull in staff and community photos. Next is LDAP and Mozillians groups. If you've ever asked yourself the question, am I in that group? Now you can answer it just by looking at your own people.mozilla.org profiles. For now, access groups here are read-only, but joining and leaving groups is a milestone still coming soon to a directory near you. In other news, Time Zone has now been updated based on profile location, with auto-calculated time zone difference. This should help you in scheduling all those global meetings with colleagues. You also ask that we reflect our strong ties to Bugzilla and GitHub by making handles available and searchable in the platform. Now Mozillians can link verified identities for both platforms and elect to make their handles searchable, making it far easier to find all versions of contributors and colleagues across these properties. Speaking of colleagues, the profile now shows a complete peers section, not just your reporting structure, because there's more than managers in a team. Finally, Zoom links that allow you to join a colleague's personal meeting room are now available, which should save you a lot of time moving between the directory and meetings. Don't worry, we've maintained the same security and privacy tenants that launched in the very first version of people.mozilla.org. All data visibility is staff configurable, and we've also launched a feature that allows you to view your profile as other users to see what their experience is like. With that, you may be wondering what's next. The big announcement here is that NDA contributors are coming to the directory soon, which is a major milestone in unifying our staff and contributor experience. We'll open this up first to beta testing towards the end of October, onboarding 20 trusted contributors. Provided that goes well, an additional 400 NDA volunteers will join by the end of November. Now the really important part. Every profile owner has complete control of their profile. Now's a great time to check those profile visibility defaults and ensure that you aren't sharing anything with NDA contributors you wouldn't want to. A complete FAQ is available at the link below for the release. If you have any questions at all about the launch, please reach out and pound IAM on Slack or leave us a comment here on Discourse. With that, that's a very long minute. I'll see you next week. Thank you, Andrew. Exciting changes coming to the people directory. Be sure to check it out and make sure that you're comfortable with your information there being viewable to a larger audience coming soon. Next up, we have me, Asa Dostler, coming to you with the weekly Firefox update. Firefox 69.0.3 is our current stable release, but the exciting news is that 70 is a release candidate and ships to our stable release audience tomorrow. Firefox 70, our new, user, our new Firefox 70 users will enjoy privacy protections report, Firefox Lockwise, which is our new password management tool, Mac OS reduced power consumption, and in developer tools, an audit for keyboard accessibility, a color deficiency simulator for systems with web render, and an inactive CSS indicator with tooltips explaining why the CSS isn't used. Really big release coming tomorrow, super excited about it. That means today is merge day. Firefox 71 is in the nightly channel and it uplifts to beta and nightly becomes Firefox 72. So if you update the, to this afternoon, this evening's build, you should see Firefox 72 version reflected. Over the last week and the final week of Firefox 71 development, there were about 500 fixes, just a little bit shy of that, including these notable ones. Reader view availability is now announced to screen reader users, which means they don't have to navigate the address bar and look to find out if the reader view button is available. They'll get a little announcement when the page loads and reader view is available. The protections panel and a toast notification will celebrate milestones when certain numbers of trackers are blocked. So when you open that protections panel, it's going to tell you you've hit your 10,000th tracker blocked and you'll get a little notification. I think this is exciting and will help people engage with this feature and understand how Firefox is uh, working to protect their privacy online. 
And last but not least, the Awesome Bar and its Mega Bar preference got some improvements, including less padding of results, not overlapping the toolbar buttons, and not overlapping other toolbars. It fits a little bit better, though it still pops up kind of like a puffer fish. Um, exciting changes coming to the Firefox toolbar. With that, uh, we're going to move to our next update, coming to us remotely with Josh and an Emerging Technologies Weekly update. Take it away, Josh. Thank you. Yes, um, we've got some really fun stuff coming up. The Firefox Reality Top Picks. I'm especially excited about this. So you probably bought yourself a fancy VR headset and you've played all the zombie, dragon, laser, kitten battle games. And now you're probably wondering, what else is there? Where can I find other cool stuff to explore while I have this headset strapped to my face? Well, we felt the same way. So we built Firefox Real to help you in your quest for the most interesting VR content on the web. The Firefox Reality Top Picks is the start of what we hope will evolve into a thriving and sustainable ecosystem connecting creators, VR content, and audience. And unlike other browsers, browsers that recommend content by mining your data and using AI, content featured in the Top Picks page is curated by real humans. We build relationships with creator communities and scour the web, seeking the best experiences from around the world. If you have or know of an amazing 360 video or interactive experience that you'd like our team to consider featuring on the Firefox Railing Top Picks, then please submit it to us here. Firefox Developer Roadshow. Want to know what over 400 local developers and designers in Germany and Austria saw when they came to the Mozilla Developer Roadshow in Nuremberg, Munich, Linz, and Vienna? You too can watch an update on Firefox and Mozilla with Ali Spivak. Understanding Modern CSS, Chen Hui Jing. XR in the browser with Fabienne Benetou. Engineering for Privacy and Mixed Reality with Diane Hosfeld. And WebAssembly in the browser and beyond with Dan Callahan, plus some great short speaker interviews. And finally, the Seal of Recognition. The Multilingual European Technology Alliance, or META, brings together researchers, companies, users, and other stakeholders in advancing language technology as a unifying influence for the people and markets of Europe. At Metaforum 2019, Mozilla was awarded the Meta Seal of Recognition for our work to enrich a multilingual European society with supportive products and technologies, including deep speech, common voice, and bringing speech to the browser. The physical award is on display in our Berlin office. And that's it for Emerging Technology. Thanks. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> Quick refresh to see if anyone's added themselves to the agenda. It doesn't look like it. That's our speakers for today. And so we move to the final piece of our weekly update, where we say hello to some new Mozillians. And we've got a, a welcome coming to us from Mike Conka in Denver. Mike? Thank you, Asa. I would like to introduce Arbor Nichols. Barbara joins us in the Portland office. She will be responsible for uh, product management of WebAssembly. Barbara has a unique dual role from her product management perspective, helping us manage the backlog for WebAssembly in Firefox itself, but she will also be reaching out to our emerging technology partners to help shepherd WebAssembly as an independent language outside the browser and making sure that it remains a competitive advantage for Mozilla as a technology. Please help me in welcoming Barbara. Welcome, Barbara Nichols. <laughs> and Stefan has a, a welcome introduction in Toronto. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, I'm very excited to introduce Kayla Galway. Uh, she is joining the bigger iOS team and focusing on Logwise, uh, Logwise for iOS. Uh, Kayla is remote in Colorado, um, so please give her a big welcome applause, uh, also remote. Thank you. Welcome, Kayla. Do we have any other introductions or last-minute additions to the agenda? I think that's it for this week. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you the same time, same place next week. Until then, keep on rocking the free web. <laughs>